Father, we praise you today. We praise you, God. You're the God of all provision for us. You are the God of all protection for us, Lord. When the world calls it uncertain times, we call it certain times because we know who holds our future, and that is you, Lord. So we praise you now. God, I can feel it coming. I feel the breakthrough coming.
gonna stop, Lord. Never gonna stop. So come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. Yes. So come now, Lord. Like never. Like never before, hallelujah, 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 come now, Lord, yeah, lift your voice to him today, come now. God of all, we honor you today. We worship you in this place today. We thank you, God. You're not just the God who oversees. You are the God who heals. Hallelujah. God, we need your healing touch in our world today. We need your healing touch in our bodies today, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. We call it done in the name of Jesus. Healing is ours in the name of Jesus. Because we abide under the shadow of the Most High God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.
trust in you.
Hey everyone, I just want to say a quick thank you for joining us today. If you haven't already, click subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Would you do that right now? Just click on that button down below me, subscribe, and that way you'll be aware of any new content that comes up, any new videos that we post. Appreciate you doing that today. And thanks for joining us today. Listen, you may be gathered in your living room, uh, watching it on, on a big screen. You may be around a laptop or you're on your phone today in a kitchen somewhere. Uh, thanks for joining in today. I want to talk to you this morning about self-confidence versus God-confidence. Self-confidence versus God-confidence. You know, if you go into any bookstore, uh, you'll find loads of books on self-confidence, how to build self-confidence. In fact, if you Google it, there's ways. And I want to give you the top five ways that Google will tell you that you can build self-confidence. Here it is. Number one is this. Visualize yourself as you want to be. Visualize yourself as you want to be. Number two, affirm yourself. Affirm yourself. Number three, do one thing that scares you every day. I don't know what that means, but that's, that's number three. Do one thing that scares you every day. Number four, question your inner critic. Question your inner crit critic. And then number five is this, take the 100 days of rejection challenge. I have no idea what that is, but that's what the world is telling us, ways that we would build self-confidence. You know, I read a scripture this week from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, that I just loved. And here's what it says. In the Message Bible, it says, forget self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God-confidence. Man, I want to say that again to you. Forget self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God-confidence. You know, when David wrote Psalms 121, and he started off really with, a question that I would consider more of a statement. Here's what he said. He said, where do I find my help? He said, I'll lift my eyes to the hills. Does my help come from there? And then he, he corrects it and says, no, my help comes from the creator in the he of the heavens and the earth. In other words, what David is saying is this. My help doesn't come from the mountains and the hills. My help comes from the one who created the mountains and the hills. My confidence doesn't come really from looking out. And I would also say that our confidence doesn't come from looking in. Here's where our confidence should come from. Our confidence should come from looking up. It's not looking out and it's not looking in. It's looking up. Like many of you, I love sports. I do. I, I just, I, I've always been a sports nut and and growing up, one of my favorite sports was basketball. And I kind of grew up in an era where you had Magic Johnson and you had Larry Bird and, and then you had, coming along, Michael Jordan. Many people would consider Michael Jordan the greatest basketball player of all time. And, and I think that that's absolutely true. I think that he really is. And one of the things about Michael Jordan is this. He would always just seem to hit that game-winning shot. Like when, when they're down by, by two or they're down by one or, or maybe the score is tied. He always wanted the ball. He was so confident. And it just seemed like there was something about him. He would always just get the ball and just hit that game-winning shot. There was something about Michael Jordan's confidence that just allowed him to do that. Well, where did he get that confidence from? Did he get it from the hours of practice that he would put in and just repetition, just hitting shot after shot after shot? Maybe that's where he got it from. Maybe he got it from the fact that he had done this before in high school. And of course, in college, he hit a famous game-winning shot to win the national championship. So he had been there before. So because he had done it before, he had the confidence to do it again. But do you know the truth is this? Michael Jordan actually missed more game-winning shots than he made. Michael Jordan made 25 game-winning shots. But do you know that he missed 26 game-winning shots? He actually did. He missed game-winning shots. He lost games. You know, see, he had, he had limits to, to his ability. But do you know there's this thing about God? You know, if God played basketball... He would never miss one shot. 
Do you know if God played baseball, he'd hit a home run every time? Do you know if God played golf, his final score would be 18? Because the thing about God is this. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He is perfect in every way. So when I talk to you about the difference between self-confidence and God-confidence, I'm telling you that we need to put our confidence in God because God cannot fail. Listen, during this virus that we're going through, this pandemic, this storm that we are, we are walking through as a world, you know, I know there's a lot of information being put out there. And sometimes we don't know what to believe and who do we trust and who do we put our confidence in. But I can tell you this, if you put your confidence in God, listen, his voice will be true every time. He never fails and he never lets us down. Let me tell you two ways to have God confidence. And the first way is this, hear what other people don't hear. You know, in Acts chapter 27, when Paul is going through a storm and he's surrounded by men who are going through it with him, do you know he actually says to them, Acts chapter 27 and verse 25, he said, hey men, be of good heart or, or take heart, take courage is what he's saying. For I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Listen to that. Paul says this, I heard a voice. It was the voice of an angel, and the angel said to Paul, hey, don't fear. You're going to get to the other side of the storm, and everybody that's with you on this boat is going to get there with you. See, the men didn't hear the voice, but Paul did. He heard what others didn't hear. As we're going through this crisis, I hope that you are listening to the voice of God. I hope you're spending more time in his word than you are watching the news or, or being bombarded by all the information that's coming our way. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, it says that faith comes by hearing. See, that's where we get our God confidence. That's where we get our faith. We get it by hearing the voice of God. Let me ask you this question. Is what you're hearing right now enough to carry you through this crisis? Are you listening and tuning into the voice of God so that you can get through this storm knowing that God is going to get you to the other side? You know, the second way that we develop God confidence is this. You see what others don't see. The first way is you hear what others don't hear. The second way is you see what others don't see. You know, I love a portion of scripture that's found in 2 Kings chapter 6 that really doesn't get as much attention as it should. There's a prophet by the name of Elisha, and he's with his servant, and he's in a city, and the king sends an army to kill them. And the Bible says that the armies of this king had surrounded the city, and they had horses, and they had chariots, and they were closing in to kill Elisha and his servant. And so the servant went outside one morning and he saw this incredible army. I mean, he saw these men that were there and they had swords and they had spears and they were riding on horses and, and he was absolutely scared. Do you know that he went back to Elisha and he said, Hey, this is it. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going to make it. We're not going to get out of this thing. But do you know that Elisha actually says, hey, don't be afraid. And here's what he says. There's more with us than there is with them. Boy, I love that verse. And Elisha prayed a prayer in 2 Kings chapter 6. And here's his prayer. Lord, would you open his eyes, his spiritual eyes. And God opened the spiritual eyes of this servant. And when he went back outside, watch this. He saw another army surrounding the army that was surrounding him. And this army had horses and chariots, but they were on fire. You see, I believe one of the greatest prayers we could pray is this. Lord, open our spiritual ears and open our spiritual eyes. It's an incredible prayer to pray. And I want to pray that for you today, and I want to pray it for me today. Lord, would you open up my spiritual ears and my spiritual eyes? so that I can have 
God confidence to make it through the storm. It's not self-confidence. It's God confidence. In Hebrews chapter 10, here's what the word of God says. The writer of Hebrews actually says, don't cast away your confidence. That's incredible words and it's words for you today. Do not cast away your confidence. And it says, here's why. For it comes with a great reward. And it gives you patient endurance. Listen, through this crisis, we need endurance. And we don't just need any kind of endurance. We need patient endurance. See, the confidence of God gives us a great reward. It gives us incredible endurance. It lets us know, hey, we are going to get to the other side. It's not because of our own ability. It's not because of our sailing credentials, you could say. The reason we're going to get to the other side of this storm is because God said we're going to get to the other side of the storm. Here's my prayer for you today. It's just simple. It's two things. Number one, that you would hear what others aren't hearing. That you'd hear the voice of God. That you'd open up the word of God, allow the Bible to speak to your heart, to give you faith, to let it rise up on the inside of you. And then also that you would be able to open your spiritual eyes to see that there's more with us than there is against us. Right where you're at, would you just do this? Would you just, whether you're gathered around a table in a living room, just close your eyes for just a moment and let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for everybody that is watching this, that is listening to this. Lord, this is our prayer today. Lord, that we would hear your voice, that we would see, God, that there's more for us than there is against us. Lord, our prayer is that we would close our natural ears and open up our spiritual ears. Lord, that we would close our natural eyes and open up our spiritual eyes. Lord, to hear your voice and to see what you're doing all around us. Father, I thank you today that as we do that, confidence arises. Faith rises on the inside of us. Lord, we're not leaning on our own ability to make it through this crisis. We're leaning on you. We put our total trust and our total confidence in the God who has never failed. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Lord, I'm so grateful today that you're able to just allow peace to flood our heart and to flood our mind. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, I want to thank you for, for watching this today. Would you do us a favor? Here's a couple things I'm going to ask you to do. Number one, would you share this video with somebody? You could maybe just send it to somebody, send the link, or, or you could share it perhaps on Facebook. Whatever you can do to get this video to people that need to hear a, a faith message. And then also I want to just thank you for continuing to give. If you go to gogracechapel.com, just click on the giving tab. During this time where we're not meeting in the building, I appreciate so many of you have been faithful to give of your tithes and your offerings. Hey, every week I say this, but it means so much to me. Uh, my wife and I, Cynthia, we miss you guys. Our leadership team, we miss you. We can't wait to see you very soon. I'm hoping to, that we can do that very, very soon. Get back together. But in the meantime, we want you to know that we are praying for you and that we love you very much. Thanks for checking this video out today. God bless you guys.